This is Josephine Breen Del Dale reading from her recent book, The Watch at Peaked Hill, which is a memoir describing seasonal life on the outer beach of Provincetown and Truro from 1953 to 2003. The book is published by Schiffer Books and will be available in June 2015. Chapter 1 Between the Sand and Stars As we drifted off to sleep in the hammock of a bed that completely filled the supposititious bedroom of Frenchie's dune shack at Peaked Hill, the flutterings and cooings of Joseph, her dove, sounded muted and soft in our ears, lulling us to tranquility and eventually to sleep. Joseph's own special cage was sagaciously placed above our heads at the exact level where his companionship could soothe us at night and awaken us softly in the morning without an accompanying rain of feathers. Frenchy awakened us the next morning with the scrape of the screen door against the sandy floor, for the boards that lifted her abode a bare inch above the settled dune were always loaded with, the, with sand. From the daily traffic in and out of the tar paper shack, no matter how carefully she swept the place. A cup of coffee was brewing on the three-burner kerosene stove, which was a model of functional efficiency. So it was that Frenchie's dune life became ours, and it has maintained its influence in our lives to the present day, as I write the remembrance of her laughter, her stories, and her directions for dune living fill the shock not a bit less joyously and clearly than they did 50 years ago. Frenchie's original shark was erected as completely found architecture. But if one walks a few hundred yards away in the sh to the shack of Harry Kemp, we find a small structure built in the immediate vicinity of the old Peaked Hill life-saving station by a former Coast Guardsman by the name of Kados. Thus linking the previous generation of structures with its descendant in every and have very special terms. All of the shacks in the environ of the Peaked Hill stations, meaning the first life-saving station and the second Coast Guard station, have given memorable life to that area since the turn of the 20th century and remain today intact with that determined individualism as to construction which is adapted to defend itself against some of the most severe tests nature can provide. Long before the plovers and the terns were determined to be a species worthy of protection by the Cape Cod National Seashore, thereby instituting regulations which infringed seasonally on the devotional con constancy of the bass fishermen pursuing their passion on the great outer beach, Frenchie trotted out to protect them in her section of the universe directly in front of her shack, which was the epicenter of the dangerous Peaked Hill Bars known to all seafaring men as the graveyard of the Atlantic. Although our early carefree days in the dunes during the 1950s moved inevitably into heavier seas, where the idols of youth meet the turbulence of events, for which there is never adequate preparation, 
We remained confident and undaunted and always sustained by the refuge of Frenchie's universe, which had been such an important part of our first few years together and would forever be a fixed star for us in the firmament at Peaked Hill. Some years after this period of our lives, I wrote a poem to commemorate those early days of life on the dunes, entitled With Frenchie at the Shack. Her birdhouse strong against the wind and riot of the dunes, marker for straying swallow, wandering heart, firmly finite in a vasty sea and sky. What else has royalty to offer me that equals half this crooked shack? Her Highness, kneeling down to scrape the mounded sand from sill and door with hands that move the very dunes to serve her will, gives grace to enter. Tar paper, sand, wind, rain, and rusty nail have shaped the nave of this cathedral. Oh, how it resounds to chords of liberated love. Silvered by sun, each board runs to age more durable than when its sap was fresh and green. And like them aging young, Frenchie puffs at her cigarette, laughs when I suggest a job cannot be done. Sand brush to crack, her yellow teapot shining, the stove flares blue and steams the blackened pot. Each match in place, and all the shack rides true, like some fast clipper ship well trimmed. A pot of coffee brewed so strong it strips the tongue of taste, turns sweet when just the two of us, odd cup in hand, sit down without the slightest haste to share the universe.